Hello, today we're going to continue our conversation about cellular respiration with a focus on the last step, the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation, which makes ATP. So just as a review, we started over here in the cytoplasm without, with glucose, and then during glycolysis we split glucose and it was able to produce NADH, remember that's electrons that we'll use later, and ATP that the cell can make right away. Then pyruvate enters the Krebs cycle and continues to be broken down, and every time that we break off a carbon bond, we release more and more electrons. So the purposes of glycolysis and the Krebs cycle collectively were to make all of these electrons that we're now finally going to use. So floating inside the matrix of the mitochondria are ions, like that's just like a normal thing that we have floating around inside of us. So if you could just picture these like floating around everywhere. And now what we're going to do is we're going to move an electron through the electron transport chain. And when it moves an electron, that pumps a hydrogen ion out into the little gap between both membranes. And then we're going to pump another electron through, and it's going to pump another hydrogen out. And then we're going to pump another electron through, and it's going to pump another hydrogen out. So we are using the energy from the electrons to be able to pump hydrogen ions out. And the end result is that we have a very high concentration of hydrogen ions out here in the space. If you're thinking to yourself, this seems weird, <laughs> why would I want a high concentration of hydrogen ions? I'm right there with you. I know, it seems weird. But ah, uh, now that we've created this high concentration of hydrogen ions, the hydrogen ions want to spread out. So the hydrogen ions will naturally flow through ATP synthase, and when they flow through ATP synthase, they make ATP. And it's a lot of ATP because there's a lot of hydrogen ions. So that was the whole purpose of everything. We broke down glucose, we broke down pyruvate to get electron carriers. We used the energy from the electrons to pump out the hydrogen ions. And then the hydrogen ions flow through ATP synthase to make ATP. One other thing worth mentioning is that the electrons are still over here in the electron transport chain. We need to do something with them. Oxygen is actually going to accept them. So the electron is going to come over here and bond with oxygen. And then after the oxygen has those negative electrons on it, it is going to attract hydrogen ions. And what do you get if you have an oxygen and two H's? H2O. So that is our other input, or output. So outputs are carbon dioxide and water. So I added a description of everything I just said out loud. Sorry, but now it looks really confusing. And then I just want to emphasize a few points, is that our inputs were glucose. So we had to put glucose in and we had to put oxygen in. If we did not put both glucose and oxygen in, the reaction would not have happened. When we put glucose and oxygen in, the outputs come out. So the outputs in this case were CO2 and water. And remember, that's our equation. Glucose plus oxygen gives us carbon dioxide plus water. And the purpose of this entire process was to make ATP. So if you're only going to remember one thing about cellular respiration, this would be the one thing that we take food, glucose, and we break it down to be able to make ATP energy. ATP is the energy that our cells use to do everything, that our cells use to breathe, to digest food, to walk, to laugh. We need lots of ATP energy to keep us going. Please send me all your questions. Thank you.